Hello all and welcome to this supplemental episode of the Maritime History Podcast. We'll call this episode 21.5, a reading of the report of Wenamun, or the misadventures of Wenamun, if you prefer that title. This text is a translation from the ancient Egyptian, taken from Ancient Egyptian Literature, A Book of Readings, Volume 2. Before I jump in here, I do also want to apologize for any errant pronunciations of Egyptian names or places. Those are all my fault. I'm no ancient Egyptian scholar, but I am going to do the best that I can. With that said, here we go into the report of Wenamun. Year 5, fourth month of summer, day 16, the day of departure of Wenamun the elder of the portal of the temple of Amun, lord of thrones of the two lands, to fetch timber for the great noble bark of Amun-Ra, king of gods, which is upon the river and is called amun user On the day of my arrival at Tanis, the place where Smendes and Tent Amun are, I gave them the dispatches of Amun-Ra, king of gods. They had them read out before them, and they said, I will do, I will do as Amun-Ra, king of gods, our lord has said. I stayed until the fourth month of summer in Tanis. Then Smendes and Tantamun sent me off with the ship's captain, Mengebet, and I went down upon the great sea of Syria in the first month of summer, day one. I arrived at Dor, a Tejeker town. And Beder, its prince, had fifty loaves, one jug of wine, and one ox haunch brought to me. Then a man of my ship fled after stealing one vessel of gold worth five debon, four jars of silver worth twenty debon, and a bag with eleven debon of silver. Total of what he stole, gold five debon, silver thirty-one debon. That morning when I had risen, I went to where the prince was and said to him, I have been robbed in your harbor. Now you are the prince of this land. You are the one who controls it. Search for my money. Indeed, the money belongs to Amun-Ra, king of gods, the lord of the lands. It belongs to Smendes. It belongs to Herhor, my lord, and to the other magnates of Egypt. It belongs to you. It belongs to Weret. It belongs to Mechmer. It belongs to Tejeker Baal, the prince of Byblos. He said to me, Are you serious? Are you joking? Indeed, I do not understand the demand you make to me. If it had been a thief belonging to my land who had gone down to your ship and stolen your money, I would replace it for you from my storehouse. Until your thief, whatever his name, had been found. But the thief who robbed you, he is yours. He belongs to your ship. Spend a few days here with me. I will search for him. I stayed nine days moored in his harbor. Then I went to him and said to him, Look, you have not found my money. Let me depart with the ship captains with those who go to sea. The next eight lines of the story are broken. Apparently the prince advises Wenamun to wait some more, but Wenamun departs. He passes Tyre and approaches Byblos. Then he seizes 30 debon of silver from a ship he has encountered, which belongs to the Tejeker. He tells the owners that he will keep the money until his money has been found. Through this action, he incurs the enmity of the Tejeker. The story continues. They departed, and I celebrated in a tent on the shore of the sea in the harbor of Byblos. And I made a hiding place for Amun of the road, and placed his possessions in it. Then the prince of Byblos sent to me, saying, Leave my harbor. I sent to him, saying, Where shall I go? If you have a ship to carry me, let me be taken back to Egypt. I spent 29 days in his harbor, and he spent time sending to me daily to say, 
leave my harbor. Now, while he was offering to his gods, the god took hold of a young man of his young men and put him in a trance. He said to him, Bring the god up, bring the envoy who is carrying him. It is Amun who sent him, it is he who made him come. Now, it was while the entranced one was entranced that night that I had found a ship headed for Egypt. I had loaded all my belongings into it and was watching for the darkness, saying, When it descends, I will load the god so that no other eye shall see him. Then the harbor master came to me, saying, Wait until morning, says the prince. I said to him, Was it not you who daily took time to come to me, saying, Leave my harbor? Do you now say, Wait this night in order to let the ship that I found apart, and then you will come to say, Go away? He went and told it to the prince. Then the prince sent to the captain of the ship, saying, Wait until morning, says the prince. When morning came, he sent and brought me up, while the god rested in the tent where he was on the shore of the sea. I found him seated in his upper chamber, with his back against a window, and the waves of the great sea of Syria broke behind his head. I said to him, Blessings of Amun. He said to me, How long is it to this day since you came from the place where Amun is? I said to him, Five whole months till now. He said to me, If you are right, where is the dispatch of Amun that was in your hand? Where is the letter of the high priest of Amun that was in your hand? I said to him, I gave them to Smendes and Tentamun. Then he became very angry and said to me, Now then, dispatches, letters, you have none. Where is the ship of pine wood that Smendes gave you? Where is its Syrian crew? Did he not entrust you to this foreign ship's captain in order to have him kill you and have them throw you into the sea? From whom would one then seek the god? And you, from whom would one seek you? So he said to me. I said to him, Is it not an Egyptian ship? Those who sail under Smendes are Egyptian crews. He has no Syrian crews. He said to me, Are there not twenty ships here in my harbor that do business with Smendes? As for Sidon, that other place you passed, are there not another fifty ships there that do business with Werechtar and haul to his house? I was silent in this great moment. Then he spoke to me, saying, On what business have you come? I said to him, I have come in quest of timber for the great noble bark of Amun-Ra, king of gods. What your father did, what the father of your father did, you too will do it. So I said to him. He said to me, true, they did it. If you pay me for doing it, I will do it too. My relations carried out this business after Pharaoh had sent six ships laden with the goods of Egypt, and they had been unloaded into their storehouses. You, what have you brought for me? He had the day book of his forefathers brought and had it read before me. They found entered into his book a thousand debon of silver and all sorts of things. He said to me, If the ruler of Egypt were the lord of what is mine and I were his servant, he would not have sent silver and gold to say, Carry out the business of Amun. It was not a royal gift that they gave to my father. I, too, I am not your servant, nor am I the servant of him who sent you. If I shout aloud to the Lebanon, The sky opens and the logs lie here on the shore of the sea. Give me the sails you brought to move your ships, loaded with logs for Egypt. For Amun makes thunder in the sky ever since he placed Seth beside him. Indeed, Amun has founded all the lands. He founded them after having first founded the land of Egypt from which you have come. Thus craftsmanship came from it in order to reach the place where I am. Thus learning came from it in order to reach the place where I am. What are these foolish travels they made you do? I said to him, Wrong! These are not foolish travels that I am doing. There is no ship on the river that does not belong to Amun. 
His is the sea, and his the Lebanon, of which you say it is mine. It is a growing ground for Amun Userha, the lord of every ship. Truly, if Amun Ra, king of gods, who said to Herhor, my master, send me, and he made me come with this great god. But look, you have let this great god spend these twenty-nine days moored in your harbor. Did you not know that he was here? Is he not he who he was? You are prepared to haggle over the Lebanon with Amun, its lord? As to your saying, the former king sent silver and gold. If they had owned life and health, they would not have sent these things. It was in place of life and health that they sent these things to your fathers. But Amun-Ra, king of gods, he is the lord of life and health, and he was the lord of your fathers. They passed their lifetimes offering to Amun. You too. You are the servant of Amun. If you will say, I will do, to Amun and will carry out his business, you will live. You will prosper. You will be healthy. You will be beneficent to your whole land and your people. Do not desire what belongs to Amun-Ra, king of gods. Indeed, a lion loves his possessions. Have your scribe brought to me that I may send him to Smendes and Tentamun, the pillars of Amun has set up for the north of his land. And they will send all that is needed. I will send him to them, saying, Have it brought until I return to the south. Then I shall refund you all your expenses. So I said to him, he placed my letter in the hand of his messenger, and he loaded the keel, the prow piece, and the stern piece, together with four other hewn logs, seven in all, and sent them to Egypt. His messenger, who had gone to Egypt, returned to me in Syria in the first month of winter, Smendes and Tentamun having sent four jars and one Kachman vessel of gold, five jars of silver, ten garments of royal linen, ten garments of fine linen, 500 smooth linen mats, 500 oxides, 500 ropes, 20 sacks of lentils, and 30 baskets of fish. And she had sent to me five garments of fine linen, five garments of fine linen, one sack of lentils, and five baskets of fish. The prince rejoiced. He assigned 300 men and 300 oxen, and he set supervisors over them to have them fell the timbers. They were felled, and they lay there during the winter. In the third month of summer, they dragged them to the shore of the sea. The prince came out and stood by them, and he sent to me, saying, Come. Now when I had been brought into his presence, the shadow of his sunshade fell on me. Then Penamun, a butler of his, intervened, saying, The shadow of Pharaoh, your lord, has fallen upon you. And he was angry with him and said, Leave him alone. As I stood before him, he addressed me, saying, Look, the business my fathers did in the past, I have done it, although you did not do for me what your fathers did for mine. Look, the last of your timbers has arrived and is ready. Do as I wish and come to load it, for has it not been given to you? Do not come to look at the terror of the sea. For if you look at the terror of the sea, you will see my own. Indeed, I have not done to you what was done to the envoys of Chaim Wesi, after they had spent seventeen years in this land. They died on this spot. And he said to his butler, Take him to see the tomb where they lie. I said to him, Do not make me see it. As for Chaim Wesi, the envoys he sent you were men, and he himself was a man. You have not here one of his envoys, though you say, go and see your companions. Should you not rejoice and have a stella made for yourself, and say on it, Amun-Ra, king of gods, sent me Amun of the road his envoy, together with Wenamun his human envoy, in quest of timber for the great noble bark of Amun-Ra, king of gods? I felled it, I loaded it, I supplied my ships and my crews, I let them reach Egypt so as to beg for me from Amun fifty years of life over and above my allotted fate. And if it comes to pass that in another day an envoy comes from the land of Egypt, who knows writing, and he reads out your name on the stella, you will receive water of the west like the gods who are there. He said to me, 
A great speech of admonition is what you have said to me. I said to him, As to the many things you have said to me, if I reach the place where the high priest of Amun is and he sees your accomplishment, it is your accomplishment that will draw profit to you. I went off to the shore of the sea, to where the logs were lying, and I saw eleven ships that had come in from the sea and belonged to the Tejeker, who were saying, Arrest him! Let no ship of his leave for the land of Egypt. Then I sat down and wept, and the secretary of the prince came out to me and said to me, What is it? I said to him, Do you not see the migrant birds going down to Egypt a second time? Look at them traveling to the cool water. Until when shall I be left here? For do you not see those who have come to arrest me? He went and told it to the prince, and the prince began to weep on account of the words said to him, for they were painful. He sent his secretary out to me, bringing me two jugs of wine and a sheep. And he sent me Tentne, an Egyptian songstress, who was with him, saying, Sing for him. Do not let his heart be anxious. And he sent to me, saying, Eat, drink. Don't let your heart be anxious. You shall hear what I will say tomorrow. When morning came, he had his assembly summoned. He stood in their midst and said to the Tejeker, What have you come for? They said to him, We have come after the blasted ships that you are sending to Egypt with our enemy. He said to them, I cannot arrest the envoy of Amun in my country. Let me send him off, and you go after him to arrest him. He had me bored and sent me off from the harbor of the sea, and the wind drove me to the land of Alatia. Then the townspeople came out against me to kill me, but I forced my way through them to where Hatiba, the princess of the town, was. I met her coming from one of her houses to enter another. I saluted her and said to the people who stood around her, Is there not one among you who understands Egyptian? And one among them said, I understand it. I said to him, Tell my lady that I have heard it said as far away as Thebes, the place where Amun is, If wrong is done in every town in the land of Alatia, right is done. Now is wrong done here too every day? She said, What is it you have said? I said to her, If the sea rages and the wind drives me to the land where you are, will you let me be received so as to kill me, though I am the envoy of Amun? Look, as for me, they would search for me to the end of time. As for this crew of the prince of Byblos, whom they seek to kill, will not their lord find ten crews of yours and kill them also? She had the people summoned, and they were reprimanded. She said to me, Spend the night. And it's here that the texts that remain are cut off, and we don't have the end of the story. Thanks everyone for tuning into this supplemental reading of the report of Wenamun, and I hope you'll join us next time for episode 22.